and what, why, I mean, what, what, why were you able to make it? Because you're involved in something larger than simply the product. Be why did you, why did that allow you to, to tough out this period? Because there's more loyalty. Because they're getting income. People get income in all sorts of different ways. And so even though financially their income may not be the same as it was two years ago or whatever, the fact that they feel they are doing good things when they go to work every day. And when it's um, Friday night and there's a problem somewhere in the network, why are people working? Because they feel good about it. They feel good about um, our, our products, our services, what people can do with those services because they enable a lot of good things in our mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's interesting, you know, from, from the standpoint of, of when you talk about the startups you're talking about, right? So uh, they, 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 what jumps out at me with those startups is actually this larger social good. I mean, your, your startups seem to be centered around what some people consider the most compelling societal or common good problem that we have. And is that... How much of that entered into, it, it seemed like for you it entered into your business decision a lot to, mm -hmm. to, to, to put time and effort into this particular company. How much did that enter into your decision making when you created your startup portfolio? Um, double bottom line, mm -hmm. I believe in it, as long as both of them have profit on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, General Electric was cited. I'm on the Dartmouth Board of Trustees, Jeff Immelt chairman of General Electric is also on the board. And in our last board meeting, he, um, he said General Electric had discovered that green was green. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so is water for them. So, and I'll tell you something, it, 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 in, my, in my book, it would be immoral for, for a guy like Emil, for a company like General Electric. General Electric is basically like a bank for a lot of America. A lot of America has a lot of their savings tied up in General Electric, and if Jeff Immelt decided to, you know, go on some social cause, I won't name some of them, but, but go on some social cause and squander money from General Electric and cut back and return to those people, to me that would be an immoral thing for him to do. Now, on the other hand... Because he, of his responsibility to shareholders? Because their money's in his hands. Yep. You know, think about it. Um, well, I'll, I'll come back to carbon dioxide in a minute. Um, now, there are other companies with double bottom lines, which as long as they're honest, doesn't matter. So take Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. So Whole Foods has got a, a double bottom line pitch, and it, it makes, it's, it's a financially viable, good business, but it also has got the, the Whole Food, the, you know, the, the uh, natural ingredient kind yeah. of thing going for it. And it, and, it, and, it, and it allows its employees to, a bunch of time off for, for charity work and stuff like that, and its CEO is, is forthright with his investors about that. Okay, well that means if I want to invest in that company, I'm investing in uh, natural foods and I'm investing in a company I can make some money and also feel like my investment is going to something I support. That's okay with me too. What I don't like is the hidden agenda where things happen, money is taken and, and it is used and, and the return to shareholders is significantly less than it could be and it's not known to shareholders. Now, mm -hmm. You, guys, you didn't say it outright when you introduced me, but one of the companies that, that Cypress started or really turned into a, a bigger company, SunPower. SunPower mm -hmm. we acquired in 2000. It was a $2 million a quarter company run by a friend of mine, a professor from Stanford, who I met in a coffee shop. He told me, I asked him how things were going, I wish I hadn't asked him that. <laughs> and he said he was about, this was the beginning of December, he said he was going to lay off half, he had like 40 people, he was going to lay off half his people before Christmas. Layoffs always happen at Christmas, right? You're always hitting the end of the year and that, that's always bad. And I asked him what he made and he said, uh, we have the world's most efficient solar cell. And there's an airplane called the Solar, uh, the solar Challenger, which is, is uh, solar cells on the wing. And it has uh, 14 uh, motors, and the mo motors being electric motors run a propellers, and this airplane was built by NASA. And it was powered by sun power, and it flew to an altitude record of 96,000 feet, which is like 20,000 above the surface, at, at the service a maximum altitude of an F-15 fighter, all in sun power. It had no gasoline, nothing. Sun shines on the wings, turns it into electricity, and flies the airplane to 96,000 feet. So I wrote the guy a personal check for 750,000 bucks to keep his company together and 
it's, a, it's an interesting and good story, but I'm not going to lay it out here. But the bottom line is we turned it into a real company. Um, it is now about a $1.7 billion company. And a year ago today, we spun it out to our shareholders. We, in other words, everybody who held cyber shares got a share of SunPower. And the value of the spin-out was $2.52 billion. Green is green. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, if you ask me why did I do it, did I do it to keep carbon dioxide molecules from going into the atmosphere, the answer is no. I didn't do that. I, I, I did it as a business investment for our shareholders. Well, how do I couple to the community that, that wants global warming to get better? Well, I don't have to be part of the crowd or not. I'm an entrepreneur, and that's a high moral position. A, a free market capitalist, a very high moral position. So without judging if they're right or wrong, I simply said, okay, uh, you're convinced carbon dioxide is a problem. You don't like global warming. Obviously, solar energy, which <laughs> uses no petroleum of any kind, is about the cleanest form of energy you can get. Therefore, you're going to want my product. I'm going to get this company. I'm going to hire some people. I'm going to build a factory. And we're going to make this, this uh, last this quarter, they'll ship about 100 megawatts, 100 million watts of, of power. That's like a tenth of a nuclear power plant in one quarter coming from sun power. And, and I, don't, I don't have to argue so global warming or not, or be on that mm -hmm. side or not, or be do good for the earth about, with regard to global warming. The moral good I provide is some people care about it. I give them what they want. I can make it cheaply and efficiently, and they can get what they want, and then, then I can uh, hire people and, and provide jobs, et cetera. That, to me, is a moral transaction. Not that SunPower happens to be a company that makes huge contributions to the elimination of global warming. That, to me, is a side benefit. Companies were formed to solve problems, right? Right. Okay. I don't have, no, I'll just, I'll just clue you in. I'm a big global warming skeptic. I think most of what Al Gore says is bunk, mm -hmm. okay? Doesn't matter. I, thank you. <laughs> It Does, doesn't matter. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to agree or disagree with them. It's a business opportunity. Bell wants my yeah. solar cells. I'll be glad to sell them some. Exactly. Green is green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. So it, it, interesting. So I, I, I understand in, in the context of a conversation. So that, that all makes sense to me. But I do believe that there are big trends as it relates to people and whether it's global warming or other causes. The big point is, is that people are motivated by lots of different things. Mm -hmm. And many of the things that, if I look at my children's generation, I've got two children, 19 and 17, they are so much more motivated by global issues and national issues than I was when I was 19 and 17. And as part of leadership, to me, you have to understand what motivates your people and how do you get them to um, want to do the things that the entity, the business itself, wants to do. That's part of my job as a leader is doing that. And so um, I, I would agree with, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from in terms of, okay, whether it is or it isn't, but the reality for our people is that they believe it is. So part of my job is to facilitate them doing the things they want to do. You know, mm -hmm. and working mm -hmm. on the kinds of projects and the kinds of things that they want to work on. And it's a big recruitment kind of edge, I think, when companies can have those offerings. Um, it's funny because Mark and I were talking about we have teenage teenage girls, and it is all about them when they're teenagers. Yeah. But that's the only way when they talk to parents. I think externally, it is all about others, and um, I I applaud that shift. Uh, you know, I've been raised in the nonprofit sector. My dad, 37 years with the American Cancer Society, so it's always been about helping others, and it's um, even through the ALF program, you know, the whole servant leader kind of idea, you know, we're working with your teams and your employees, it's, you know, enabling them to be the best that they can be. And, um, and you know, with looking at this next generation coming forward and, and the type of work they want to do, they want to solve problems, and they want to solve meaningful problems, and they feel a sense of urgency to that, and they're looking for that balance in the workplace that gives them that opportunity mm -hmm. to make a difference in whatever way they can. Um, and I think companies that have that opportunity are the ones that are gonna have the long-term success versus that short-term quarter-to-quarter kind of thing. Mm -hmm. People don't wanna be on that habit trail little treadmill thing anymore. They're tired of that. I think they wanna think a little longer term. I think this reset has done that. Um, and then do some good while they're doing their jobs. Mm -hmm.